You're welcome to class once again. In today's lecture, I'm going to show you how to derive the general formula that can be used to solve any type of quadratic equations. I'd like you to know that the factorization method has some limitations in that it might not be able to solve all types of quadratic equations. So there is a particular formula that can be used to solve any type of quadratic equation. And the formula is called the algebraic formula. Some textbooks call it the quadratic formula, while some call it the almighty formula. And I told you that the reason why it is called the almighty formula is because it can be used to solve any form of quadratic equation. There is no way you will talk about the quadratic formula without talking about the completing the square method because the completing the square method is a, is a method that we can use to derive the formula method or the quadratic formula. So join me as I show you how to derive this formula. Now remember that the quadratic equation has the general form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. This is the general form of any quadratic equation. And I'm sure by now you know why it is called a quadratic equation. This is because the highest variable power here is two. So that makes it a quadratic. If we have three, we have cubic. If we have four, we have quartic. And if we have five, it is called a quintic equation. I'm sure we dealt with that in our previous lessons on algebra. Now, how do we go about deriving the formula, the algebraic formula? It is very simple. You're going to follow me as I discuss it stepwise. The first step is to take the constant term to the right hand side of the equal to sign. Take note, take the constant term, in this case, C, to this other side of the equation. And by so doing, we have ax squared plus bx equals minus c. That is the first step. Now, the second step is to divide through by the coefficient of x squared if it is not 1. If the coefficient of x squared is not 1, you have to divide through by the coefficient of x squared. But what if the coefficient of x squared is 1? Definitely, you just jump to step 3. So the step 2, let's call this step 1. Step 2 is to divide through by the coefficient of x squared. So we have ax squared over a plus bx over a equals minus c over a. And of course, this cancels out to give x squared plus bx over a equals minus c over a. That is our second step. Moving over to the third step, which is to find the half of the coefficient of x. The half of the coefficient of x. In this case, what is the coefficient of x? Of course, the coefficient of x is, so this is our third step. The coefficient of x is b over a. So if I'm to find the half of it, it means half of you know, of simply means time. So half of b over a. If this is confusing, we can say b over a divided by 2. So remember from indices, b over a is divided by 2. We can call it, we can write it in this form. And we can also say this is equal to b over a times 1 over 2. So it's the same thing as what we have over here. So, this simplifies to b over 2a. So, once we have this over here as the half of the coefficient of a, we are going to square it and add it to both sides. So, the square of this is equal to b over 2a all squared. So, we are going to add it to both sides. And if I do that, we have x squared plus bx over a plus b over 2a 
all squared equals minus c over a plus b over 2a all squared. I'm sure you are still with me. All right. If this is done, then let us go over to the fourth step. And the fourth step here is to ignore the left hand side and solve the right hand side arithmetically. I'll come again, ignore the left hand side, do as if it does not exist, and solve the right hand side arithmetically. So I will ignore, ignore the left hand side first. So the right hand side is minus c over a plus b square over 4a squared. What is, remember, 2a squared is equal to 4a squared. Is that okay? And that is why we have b squared over 4a squared. So if I find the LCM, the LCM of this is equal to 4a squared. So a goes in 4a squared, 4a, then multiply by minus, we have minus 4ac and plus 4a square goes in 4a square once so 1 times b square will give us b square now we'll be able to solve the right hand side arithmetically now let us now bring it closer let us equate it to the ignored left hand side this forms our step 5 Step 5 is to equate the left hand side and the right hand side together. So if we do that, we have x squared plus b x over a plus b over 2a all squared equals minus 4ac plus b squared over 4a squared. So since we have this, the left hand side over here the left hand side is looking just like the sum of two squares sum of two squares and if I compress it I would have x squared plus b over 2a all squared which also give me x plus b over 2a all squared is that okay so I haven't said that I would have to equate the left hand side and the right hand side if i do that i have x plus b over 2a all squared equals minus 4ac plus b squared over 4a squared now my major focus is to make sure that the dependent the independent variable stands alone in this case the independent variable is x. I want x to stand alone. So what do I do? The next step here is to add the square root to both sides. If I add square root to both sides or simply put, take the square root of both sides. So if I take the square root of both sides, I have square root over here and square root over here. The right hand side becomes plus or minus the square root of everything that is included there so this square will cancel out the square root and i am left with x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus square root of minus 4ac plus b squared over 4a squared then i now have to remove any hindrance that is standing in the way of x just to make x stand alone and what is the hindrance over here the hindrance of course is plus b over 2a and how do i do that i have to subtract b over 2a from both sides if i do that i have x plus b over 2a minus b over 2a equals minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of minus 4ac plus b squared over for a squared definitely this will cancel out and I have X equals minus B over 2a plus or minus the square root of minus 4ac plus B squared over 4a squared 
from swords, you will realize that if I have square root of a over b, it will give me square root of a over square root of b. They are the same. Therefore, if I use the same analogy over here, I would have x equals minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of minus 4ac plus b squared over the square root of 4a squared. And the square root of 4a squared is still the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of a squared. Therefore, I have x to be equal to minus b over 2a plus or minus square root of minus 4ac plus b squared over to a. All right. This looks like fraction because we can say this is a fraction and this is another fraction separated by the arithmetic operation plus or minus. And if we have that, we can find the LCM of the two fractions. And uh, this gives us 2a. Of course, if we simplify this further, we have that our x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of minus 4ac plus b squared, which can be rearranged to be x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. This gives us the equation, the formula for any quadratic equation. We can use this formula to solve any quadratic equation and that is why we call it the almighty formula. Alright, I want us to take note of something in this particular formula. Let us bring what is under the square root out. We have b squared minus 4ac. This is our focus for this next segment. And I want you to be very careful. I want you to pay attention to this. b squared minus 4ac is called discriminant. Do you know that there is a way you can check if a particular quadratic equation is solvable or not? If it has one root, if it has two solutions or roots, or it cannot even be solved. There is a way you can do that. And the only way we can do that is to check for our discriminant. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Take note, we use a symbol D to represent discriminant. So D is equal to what? Discriminant. And I have already told you why it is called a uh, discriminant. It's called discriminant because we can use this, this particular expression to confirm if our quadratic equation has roots, if it has two distinct roots, if it has only one root, or if it has no real root. And how do we do that? So I want you to take note that if D, if D, which is our discriminant, is greater than zero, what happens? It means that we only have two distinct roots. That is, we have two values for the solution of our quadratic equation. What if D is less than zero? If D is less than zero, then there are no real roots. That is, there is no solution for that particular quadratic equation. The only solution is that the quadratic equation has complex roots. And I'm sure you know what complex numbers are. So what if D is less than zero? That means we have no real roots. No real roots. That is, we only have complex roots. And I'm sure you know what complex roots are. Complex roots are complex numbers are of the form a plus or minus b high. You understand? Don't worry. In our subsequent classes, I'll tell you what complex numbers are in 
details then if we have if d is equal to zero then we have two equal roots that is we have a single solution to the quadratic equation if we have two equal roots, that means we have a single solution to that particular equation now let us check let us see how we can use discriminant how we can use discriminant consider this quadratic equation consider the quadratic equation let's say consider we have a quadratic equation 8 x squared minus 2 x minus 3 equal to 0 I want to check first if number one this quadratic equation has a distinct root or two distinct roots or cannot even be solved if it has no real root i told you that the yardstick we use here is the discriminant and we said that discriminant d equals b squared minus 4 a c now before we do this, we have to compare the particular equation given to our general form of equation, general form of quadratic equation. So remember, general form is given by ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. So if we compare, if we compare these two, we have that a equals eight. A is the quotient of x squared then b equals minus 2 and c equals minus 3. So let us check the value of d. d will be equal to minus 2 squared minus 4 into 8 times minus 3. Therefore, our d is equal to 4, 4 minus 4 times 24. Therefore, we have d equals 4 minus 96 so what is 4 minus 96 of course d will now give us minus 92 now the focus is what is minus 92 is minus 92 greater than 0 or less than 0 or equal to 0 of course minus 92 is less than 0 if minus 92 is less than 0 Therefore, from the condition above, we said if D is less than zero, that means there are no real roots. If D is less than zero, that means there are no real roots for the particular equation. The no real roots. Therefore, the roots we have would now be what? complex roots. So before even going further to solve this particular question, we already know that there are no real roots. So we know what to expect while solving this particular problem. All right. I'm sure we've been able to do justice to the general form of quadratic equation. I want you to note that the completing the square method we used to derive the general form of equation can be used to obtain the general form of equation for solving any quadratic equation that is not factorizable. If you see any form of equation that is not factorizable, then go further to using either the completing the square method, which is a consequence of the algebraic formula, or you can go further to use the algebraic formula directly to solve for your unknown variable. I want us to also note that it solves quadratic equations more accurately than any other method. Is that okay? We can use it to solve quadratic equations more accurately. So with these, we have come to the end of today's class on the derivation of the quadratic formula. And I'm sure by now you should be able to derive the general form of equation for the quadratic formula. All right, if you have questions or if you have problems that you need more light on, you can drop those 
questions in the comments section as I am always here to attend to them. Keep bringing them. We are here to solve them for you. And I'm sure before the end of this series, you should be able to know how to solve problems on your own. All right, see you in our next class as we will solve more problems on the quadratic formula method.